Thank you, Paul. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is the uh, annual event in which we uh, update you on the finances of the of the society, and uh, a copy of the accounts has already been uh, provided um, together with a glossary. So the, uh, the purpose of this presentation is to help you to understand the accounts a little better and to give you an opportunity to ask questions. Um, of course, the Finance Committee has already reviewed the annual report and accounts in detail and Council has approved them. And um, the most important of all, perhaps, the auditors have signed them off. I'll, uh, I'll try to keep this uh, fairly brief. So, um, in line with the statutory requirements, uh, our annual report and accounts um, is split into four sections, uh, and uh, they are as follows. Firstly, the narrative on the activities of society and how, through our charitable, object charitable objectives, we've benefited the wider public, and that benefit to the wider public is a really, really crucial uh, part of what we do. And the narrative is split into three areas, and they're on pages 1 to 29. Key achievements and performance, financial review, including policies, and future plans. Uh, the, second, the second element is the de detailed information in the, uh, the, the uh, statutory account, uh, report and accounts on the legal structure, the governance and management, and uh, recording the approval uh, given by council, and that's on pages 30 to 33. And then the auditor's report on pages 34 to 37, and finally the detailed financial information set out uh, between pages 38 and 56. So, first of all, um, uh, the statement of our financial activities, abbreviated to SOFA, uh, on page 38, and that is presented in the format required by the Charity Commission, uh, and I'll uh, provide a brief overview of the figures presented on pages 38 to 56. Uh, the accounts are split by fund, um, generally, I'll ignore the split between the different funds and I'll talk about the total figures. And uh, this year, the accounts show unrestricted, restricted and endowment income and expenditure. And just to remind you, uh, restricted funds, bequests, donations, grants, can only be spent on particular specified purposes. Unrestricted funds can be spent on any of the society's activities and endowment funds relate to the capital that provides income for the support of, of, of specified objectives. So, uh, beginning with income on this slide, um, and total um, incoming resources decreased by £1,546,701 in 2017-18, and, 18, and uh, you'll see that at the bottom there. That's 2017, 2018. Now that may appear to be alarming, but in fact it's not alarming at all, um, because uh, the decreases were caused by the fact that in 2016, 2016-17, uh, um, we received uh, uh, from the estate of Beat Beatrice de Cardi um, an unrestricted donate, uh, an unrestricted restricted donation of 5,000 pounds and an endowment investment of 1.584 million pounds. So that showed in 2017-18, but that was not there in 2018. And also, uh, we had uh, a, uh, a bequest uh, from um, John Casey of over uh, five, five, um, 500,000 um, pounds in 2016-17, and 17, uh, which we didn't have uh, in, in the current year. So that accounts for the, that significant decrease. And they were exceptional um, uh, bequests. Um, however, on the other hand, um, the, the, uh, the decrease is not as large as it might have been because, in fact, we got over half a million in donations and heritage lottery fund support for 
uh, the uh, Calvin Scott Past, Present and Future project, and, and that is shown as part of that total uh, in 2018. Um, and uh, also, um, Calvin Scott and the other trading activities increased by 48,000. Um, owing to a record number of visitors, 21,600 uh, at Calvesta. And just to show the income in a different way, which may be more readily understandable, um, th this graph shows the income figures for 2018 in blue and 2017 in red. And the first columns represent income, uh, the first columns, two columns on the left, um, represent income from donations, grants, and legacies. And the large decrease in 2008, uh, uh, 2018, as I've already said, is due to the one-off bequests from Beatrice Picardi and John Case in 2017, which obviously didn't occur in 2018. All the other income streams remain broadly the same relative to the prior year. And just to show that in yet another format, if you extract from those columns uh, the Kelmscott uh, past, present, and future income, the Dicardi and John Casey requests, then that's what it looks like. So broadly, um, a similarity across the two years in terms of uh, the different types of income. Expenditure. Um, expenditure is split, as you can see, uh, on in the three columns on the left between unrestricted funds, restricted funds, and endowment funds. Um, and the performance of these funds is monitored very closely by the society, and they're detailed in the narrative section of the report. Um, but let us focus on the, um, the two columns on the right-hand side, which are the total funds for 2017 and 2018. Um, the costs of raising funds, um, at the, at the top on the left and, run, and running across the page. These are costs incurred to raise voluntary income. They consist of the development office, uh, the cost of sales of the trading company, Lucerna, and, uh, and room hire. Uh, the total cost of raising funds came to 275,000, uh, and in 2017 it was 326,000. And the reason for the lower costs in 2018 are mainly that the development office uh, costs were lower than last year due to the head of development's time being spent on the uh, Calmscott past, present and future project. Um, the cost of sales for the Cerner increased in line uh, with the higher trading. Um, charitable activities moving halfway down. Um, Conservation activity, first of all. Uh, our activity at Calmscott counts here, plus the Morris grants to churches and the care of our own collections. And uh, there was a higher spend on um, Calmscott past, present, and future, 438,000, uh, uh, compared to 98,000 in two th uh, 2017. And that was because the project was beginning to get going and the development work was being done. Uh, on a much greater scale in 2018. Um, the research costs, the costs of running the library, uh, and also uh, the costs of research grants. Uh, dissemination, which includes the publications program, the costs of communicating with fellows, and the running of the lecture program. That's, um, that's a C. And uh, allocated across all of these are our support costs. So there's a percentage of our support costs uh, which go into all of these, all of these areas of, of activity, finance and administration, human resources, and so on, and the maintenance of, of, of our office space in Burlington House. And support costs have decreased by 34,000 this year. Uh, and that's net of increases in rent, which has gone up from uh, 38,000 last year to 43,000 this year, and will continue to rise, and I'll mention that again later. The society is still in discussion uh, with our landlords and their agents, our landlords being the government, government, over rent for Burlington House and the renewal of the lease for a further 10 years. So, the total spend 
um, is 2,045, 7, 711 in 2018, um, against income, if you cast your minds back to a previous slide, of 2,263,818, 2, which is a surplus of 218,000. And just to show uh, the expenditure um, in hopefully a, perhaps a, a more easily understandable form, um, under the different categories again, um, and just to remind you again that the higher costs, uh, red is 2007, blue is 2018, uh, 2017, 2018, and the higher costs under charitable activities in 2018. Um, Conservation, so that's um, that one in particular, those higher costs in, in 2018. Um, that again is because it includes the, the expenditure on accounts for past, present, and future of 438,760, which I mentioned earlier now that the project has got going. And just to, uh, just to look at Calmstock itself. Um, and uh, the income for Calmstock past, present and future is included in the restricted income funds on page 54 of the accounts and uh, we receive matching funding donations for Calmstock of over 324,000 and Heritage Lottery Fund funding um, uh, received in the financial year was 199,000 giving a total on the uh, Calmstock past, present and future project of 524,000. And that is that uh, there, uh, sorry, the, the, the 2018 column. And all of the expenditure a day in 2018 in respect of Cam Scott was incurred in preparing and submitting the Heritage Lottery Fund bid which has resulted, as I'm sure you all know, in, in the award of £4.3 million pounds towards Cowscot. Um, and that is obviously not yet shown in these, these accounts and indeed um, will be paid um, when we put in claim forms for the work that is carried out. Just moving on very briefly to the profit and loss account, um, the investment portfolio uh, was valued £143,000 lower this year. That is at A, there, 2018. Actuarial, actuarial losses in the year were 3,500 uh, compared to a gain of 12,000 in the previous year. And this uh, gives uh, a, a surplus of 71,000 uh, for the year. Um, let's move on to the, the balance sheet. Um, the consolidated balance sheet um, is the review of the full financial assets of the society as of the 31st of March this year, the end of the accounting year. Um, and uh, the intangible assets there are. Um, uh, the costs of uh, uh, the, the value of software. Um, uh, the tangible, tangible assets going down the list are improvements to buildings, furnishings, equipment, and taking into account in that process de de depreciation. Um, investments I'll, I'll look at on a separate slide, um, but this is the value of Calmstock, uh, the various assets at Calmstock, plus our investment funds. Current assets include uh, which is which is stock at at, at Scott, uh, debtors, um, gift aid, annual subs, and room hire fees still owing. Um, liabilities these include VAT settlement, grants agreed but not yet paid out, and a proportion of the subs received in January 2018, but no benefit delivered until April 2018 onwards. So not within the financial year. And moving down to the uh, endowment at the bottom. Um, the permanent endowment is, is the capital funds, the income from which is, is, is used for specific purposes. And capital can't be converted, this is important to income, unless approved by the Charity Commission. 
um, restricted capital funds are from specific allocations and appeals by council for purposes, uh, specific purposes such as research publications, Kelmscott and Burlington House. And the council can spend in these, in, in these cases uh, capital if need be. Uh, restricted income is income from permanent endowment funds to be used and applied to the specific purposes uh, but not yet used. And the funds of the charity uh, section um, show, show um, our, net, our, our net assets and how they are split by fund. And the group net, net assets, that's uh, Lucerna and, and the society, have reduced by uh, 71,000 uh, as in the profit and loss, uh, as in the profit and loss. I said I'd say a word about investments. Um, our investments are, are split between four types, per, as I said before, permanent endowment, restricted capital, restricted income, and unrestricted. And um, the Saracens Al Alpha Common Investment Funds, um, which is our main uh, channel for investments, 90% uh, of that is in endowments, 10% in income, and reserves, as it says uh, there at the bottom, then those funds are held by by, um, by Samsons. And the um, the market value of the investments of the 31st of March 2018, the end of the financial year, um, was 15 million 768 thousand. <coughs> Uh, there were a number of uh, downturns during the year in our investment portfolio because of the markets, but towards the end of the year there was a substantial recovery. And just to set out on this slide that uh, we had uh, the auditor's opinion at the end of the year, there was no qualification to our accounts, and uh, although they advised us, uh, advised us as auditors always do on a number of my things in our accounting procedures, um, we got a clean bill of health, which was good news. And of course, what we would expect to get. Just to summarise then at the end, to remind you um, of a number of points. First, we have an established policy to deliver our charitable purposes. Uh, and those purposes must be maintained. And as in the past, over the last year, the, the financial year for which these accounts have been produced, we've used our resources to deliver strongly our objectives of conservation, research, and dissemination. And we've exerted throughout the year, and certainly the executive team and the finance committee have exerted um, very firm cost control measures through robust budgeting exercises and financial probity. And uh, we very much ensure that expenditure is kept in line with income. Um, as I said before, um, that is taking into account that the rental costs of Burlington House are continuing to rise. We also, as you know, apply, uh, apply a total returns policy uh, to take a modest amount of capital each year from our long-term investment holdings. That's in addition to the interest which we, we generate on that capital, which we can spend. Um, and that uh, is obviously variable from year to year, uh, but the, the percentage we, we have normally applied, and, and uh, uh, that, that has not changed, is 1.5% of, of that capital. Um, although no drawdown, no 1.5% was required in 2017-18 uh, because of the unrestricted uh, request from John Casey, for which meant that we didn't have to, to make that drawdown. And uh, just to remind you as well that the statutory accounts also have to show other costs which the society incurs, which are above and beyond uh, the day-to-day -day costs, and depreciation, pension liabilities, uh, and those sorts of things. 
Um, and finally, um, our uncertainty going forward, our financial uncertainty, still lies largely in the cost of the occupancy of Burlington House. And uh, although we are committed to staying in Burlington House, um, negotiations are continuing um, in regard to the new lease and uh, the rent levels which will be applied to us over the next 10 years. And that is a really key issue for the society. Um, and secondly, the uh, second big challenge is pensions. Um, the pension fund that we're in, which is the one that all the universities are in, um, has been revalued um, uh, because basically the figures are no longer added up. And uh, there are proposals at the moment to increase the contributions both for employers and employees, which would, not, which, which would obviously not be welcome to employees, uh, but equally would not be welcome to employers. And uh, so those discussions are ongoing, and we've certainly fed into those discussions, although the big players in the pension scheme are the universities. Uh, so certainly in the coming year, we'll be keeping a very close eye both on the, the rent negotiations for Burlington House and the outcome of the pensions negotiations. Thank you very much.